Pat, take it away. Okay. First of all, I'd like to welcome everyone. Um, thank Amy for always assisting and being so supportive. And I, we are lucky tonight. We have a very interesting speaker named Paula Lee. When I want to tell you a little bit about her and why we came upon ranked choice voting as part of the League of Women Voters uh, focus. You know, we've had several. One was on criminal justice, one was on housing and homelessness, and there's also on the democratic reform and democracy. And part of this is it's right in with tonight's program. Paula was contacted by her. She made a connection with Paula. And so then she and I hooked up and Paula has been an active leader, leader in the League of Women Voters for over 20 20 and all focus has been just primarily on electoral reform. Her work has led leagues in cities and states across the country to study electoral systems. Then the result is that our California state and national position, which is to support alternatives to plurality voting, such as ranked choice voting and proportional representation. So tonight we're gonna hear about ranked choice voting and you'll get to know Paula. She has lots of background in this area. She's also been the uh, past president and current advocacy director for the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County. She lives in Sacramento, Sacramento and I know she has a couple of grandchildren because we talked yesterday. She works part-time as a legislative consultant for the California Association of Alcohol and Drug Educators. So we are happy to have her. We hope we will find out if you ever you needed to know or wanted to know, you should leave this meeting knowing what ranked choice voting is and why it's considered uh, a really po a big possibility for um, our system. And our system is definitely voting system is in need of some, you know, really looking at better ways to do things and tax benefits, uh, taxpayer benefits, and all kinds of things. So, Paula is here, and Paula. Take it away and thank you for doing this. Actually, very quickly, let me jump in before Paula sure. does. I have to make my usual announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to use the chat feature to do our question and answer with Paula at the end. So if you're not familiar with that function in Zoom, if you take your mouse and hover over your menu bar, you should see a little bubble button that says chat. Please open up the chat function type in the questions that you have, please type them as you go, because if you're like me, you're gonna forget your question at the end if you don't put it in there when you have it. And at the end of Paula's presentation, we'll take the questions in the order that they were put into the chat. So Paula, now please take it away. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's really great to be here. Um, I appreciate you coming for this discussion of what sometimes can be a, a wonky topic. We are in the league, a multi-issue organization, but this has been my passion, as Pat said, because whatever your priority issue is, really electoral reform is necessary to achieve the public policy that we all seek. You know, who's sitting in the seats really matters. So um, while no electoral system is perfect, our current system, the plurality system. Many are very familiar with it, but it's actually very, very archaic. It came over with the British and it leads to those very familiar apathy words that we as league members uh, often hear. Things like my vote doesn't matter, um, candidates I support never win, or it's, it's all rigged for incumbents. There's no real choices, things like that. So the history here is that many different systems were studied by local and state leagues all over the country. This is since we did our California study back in 2001, which I uh, Pat knew about, so some of you may know about. And that's when the state league first supported instant runoff voting, which is the same thing as ranked choice voting. So, um, but since then, uh, all these studies have happened all over the country, and that's what led to uh, our current state and national position. So there are other ranked systems that were examined. However, ranked choice voting was the absolute top 
Dois and all the resulting uh, positions uh, from these state and local leagues. It's really nothing new. Uh, for those of you who think it is new, think Robert's Rules of Order, which have been around a long time. It's called preference voting in Robert's Rules, and it's the same thing. It's used in most democracies um, in the world, and it's used for the, even the Academy Awards. And leagues all over the country have been helping to implement it, which is really great. So these uh, are some of the benefits that you see here on the screen of being able to rank your candidates by preference. And what we get from this is empowered voters, more campaign civility, less money spent, and no wasted votes. Sounds great. So we're gonna talk about these benefits later. Okay, uh, next slide. Thanks, Amy. Opposers of ranked choice vo voting often claim that it's confusing. That's what Governor Newsom said in a veto. But believe me, ranked choice voting is not confusing. We have been doing it our whole lives. My granddaughters that Pat referred to, you know, like if a favorite stuffy was left at home, there's always a second choice, right? Your movie or your favorite pie is sold out. You've got another choice. The refrigerator or the restaurant is out of something. It's always requiring a second choice. So even remember a while back, there were 19 or more choices for on the presidential primary ballot. And you probably remember some of these conversations. You probably had them yourself. Well, uh, my favorite would be, or my first choice would be, but then if they didn't make it, my second choice would be my third. Some people were even talking about their fourth or people that they could live with, or maybe some they could never rank at all. And that's what you can do with ranked choice voting. So initially it does take voter education, but hey, that's where the league shines. Uh, Governor Newsom, as I said, said it was confusing. Uh, however, voters in San Francisco have been ranking their candidates successfully since 2004 in many languages. Many jurisdictions have two elections to determine a majority winner if there's no majority in the first election. And one benefit of ranked choice voting is that you can get that majority winner in only one election, no matter how many candidates run. So I'm gonna be using San Francisco as an example tonight, only because there's, there's, it's been around for a long time. So I have a couple of videos that show candidates talking about how it works. And uh, for them, which I think is quite interesting because you have to convince the electeds, of course, and also voters talking about it. So um, uh, in San Francisco, they have eliminated runoffs. They used to have runoffs for their elections. And in, in 2002 dollars, they have saved an estimated 2.7 million per year. And then in the city of Oakland, city of Oakland's used it since 2010. They say save over uh, 700,000 a year. And there's also this great campaign finance benefit for, for candidates because they don't have to raise money for a second runoff election. And if you eliminate runoffs, obviously there's less money in politics. So that's good. Next slide. This is our... California uh, and national state voter representation position that was adopted, adopted in our state in 2019 and then by the league last in 2020, National League. And it's the result of these many studies uh, across the country. And this language that you see here in this position, uh, as much as we wanted to wordsmith it some, we really couldn't, we had to take all the language directly from state uh, league adopted positions and some local league uh, positions too. But as you can see, it encourages electoral methods that provide the broadest voter representation possible. 
That's the goal. And it supports implementing alternatives to our current plurality system. Uh, when it was adopted at, by the state convention, it was unanimous. And when it was adopted um, by our national organization, it was adopted with 93% support. This is very historic, by the way. And ranked choice voting meets all these criteria established in these positions. Next slide. This is a little bit more of the position. The state and national position supports proportional representation, which means electing policy making bodies that proportionately reflect the people they represent. Our position also wants to prevent gerrymandering. And both of these goals are actually nearly impossible in our current system with single winner districts, um, winner take all system. And these districts, because they're single winner reflect only one party. I call them one party districts, red or blue. And that's what interested me in electoral systems because I happened to live for uh, 30 years in Congressional District 4, John Doolittle, Tom McClintock, uh, bright red. And I was never represented at any level of government for 30 years. And I'll tell you, I've lived in Sacramento for 12 years now and I'm in a sea of blue. My representative is Doris Matsui. I know exactly how my representatives are gonna vote on everything. And so I've never felt represented in El Dorado County and I don't feel I have any influence here either. So that's why I'm passionate about changing the system. And the Fair Representation Act for Congress, which has been introduced by Don Beyer from Virginia with some co-authors, Jamie Raskin and Rob Kana from California and um, I think Scott Peters from San Diego also is a co-sponsor. This is really what's gonna help us achieve this goal of representative government, but that's using the multi-winner version of ranked choice voting. And uh, I must say representative government is a fundamental principle of the league, but under the current system, we really don't have it. And of course we don't have a position that supports plurality voting. So I'm really thrilled to have this new position. And I encourage you to look it up. The remainder of it, um, uh, the link, you're, you're gonna get the link to this position. Uh, it appears in the um, national publication from the League uh, Impact on Issues, which is a great thing to have because it has all of our national positions in there. The rest of the position supports legislation that would allow a lot of cities in Stanislaw County that are now general law cities, most of them, with the exception of Modesto, which is a charter city, it would allow them to, to choose um, uh, to use an alternative system if their voters adopted it and supported it. General law cities right now can't. And like I said, most of them are in your county um, and two thirds of the cities actually in California are general law. And a city has to adopt a charter to change its system. So when I talked about Newsom saying that it was um, confusing, it was actually uh, legislation um, called the local option bill that, that would have allowed general law cities to choose. It didn't cost the state any money. It was bipartisan. We got it all the way to the, the um, governor's desk and three governors have vetoed it. So change is difficult. Schwarzenegger, Brown, and Newsom. So our position also encourages a concerted voter education effort. And you can read about it um, on page 47 and 48 of that publication. So you'll get those links. Today, I'm just gonna be focusing on the single winner version of ranked choice voting, which is used to elect offices such as governor, attorney general, mayor, or a single winner in a district, someone who's gonna be one person to represent an entire area. So what's wrong with this current system that came over with the British? Next slide. 
These are some of the problems that are created or intensified by our current plurality system. It can easily provide, of course, a majority winner when there's only two candidates because one of them is guaranteed to get a majority. But if in a three or four way race or more, a candidate can win with less than a majority and most often they do. And this is due to vote splitting. You're familiar with it. It's known as the spoiler effect. League members probably certainly remember um, these wasted votes that can help elect voters least favorite candidate. The classic example is the presidential elections in, 90, in 1992 and 2000. They were great examples of vote splitting. Nader voters helped elect George Bush by splitting the vote with Al Gore in 2000. And then in 1992, Perot voters, Perot got 19% of the vote and split the vote with um, um, George Bush Sr. And of course, helped elect Clinton with 43% of the vote, much to the dismay of Republicans. Next slide. This is Modesto elections. I did a little research and I found um, no majority winners in one election. Um, it looks like your city council uses uh, plurality voting and no runoffs for city council, but they did have a runoff for mayor. Uh, District three was very interesting because it was um, no majority winner because there were three candidates, but it was really close. The winner won with 35% of the vote. However, what this means is that 70% of the voters preferred someone else and they feel like they lost. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, I know I don't know these candidates. You guys probably have different opinions on all these people, but I don't know them at all. I'm just looking at the numbers. Uh, vote splitting then also prevented a majority winner for mayor in November. And this was really shocking because the top candidate only got 24% of the vote in the high turnout election because there were like eight candidates, I believe. So they held a runoff election in February and um, it was a low turnout election. I have the number, oh yeah, I had the numbers 33,000 uh, versus 84,000 in uh, November. So only 33,000 turned out uh, uh, not turned out, but um, cast uh, votes in that election in February. And so you did get a majority winner, but it was very close. And it, what it means is that only 33,000 voters were able to determine the winner. And these voters could have used ranked choice voting to indicate their choices at a higher turnout November election and skip this whole runoff election and save money. And it may, I don't know this election, but I'm interested to find out if, it, if you guys remember if it was, if it got negative and nasty, sometimes they really do when it gets down to two people. Um, the city council candidates also could have elected um, and uh, could have been elected with majority support. Um, and then more voters would have been winners. In, in, in those elections too, because most people in those elections preferred someone else. So ranked choice voting is a simple upgrade to the way we currently vote. It would allow these voters the option to rank candidates in order of their preference, one, two, three, ranking only those candidates they could live with, so to speak. If their vote cannot help their top choice win, then next choice or the backup choice of that voter will be counted. So votes are not wasted. More voters feel like they have a say in the election if a candidate they can live with wins and more candidates will be inclined to run without fear of vote splitting and being a spoiler. This means voters will have more choices and then we'll get more diverse candidates, including women. Women will be able to run without having to await their turn, which they hear a lot, um, 
maybe not so much in local, but certainly at the state level. Anyway, what we really want is to achieve a more inclusive and representative democracy. So what I'm going to do right now is just in a couple sentences, I'm going to describe um, how a vote, a ranked choice voting is count is counted, and then we're going to see a video. Okay, and in the video you'll see how ranked choice voting could have provided these majority winners in these districts and for Modesto's mayor. So here's how it works. Voters pick a first choice candidate and then they have the option, they don't have to, but they have the option to rank bank up backup candidates. The candidate, the counting begins. And if a candidate receives more than half of the first choices, that candidate wins just like in any other election. They don't look at any, anything else because that candidate clearly had majority support. However, if there's no majority winner, after counting the first choices, the race is decided by an instant runoff. There's no need for that second election. The candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated. The voters who picked that eliminated candidate as the first choice will have their vote count for their next choice if they have one. And this process continues very quickly by computer, boom, boom, until you have a candidate who meets that threshold of 50% plus one to win. Okay, now we're gonna see the video that shows this in a more entertaining way. So what is ranked choice voting? In most parts of the United States, voters select a single candidate for each position on their ballot, and the candidate with the most votes wins. This is known as single choice winner take all, which can sometimes result in the election of a candidate who earned only a small percentage of the vote, even when the majority of voters supported other candidates. But that's not the only way of electing our leaders. Ranked choice voting is another voting method which allows voters to rank their candidates in order of preference. In a ranked choice voting election, a candidate needs to earn more than half of the votes to win. All first choices are counted, and if a candidate has a majority, then they win, just like any other election. If not, the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated, and voters who picked that candidate as number one will have their votes count for their next choice. This process continues until a candidate earns a majority and is declared the winner. Let's look at an example. Here, you select orange as your first choice candidate, yellow as your second, pink as your third, and green as your final choice. The first choices are counted. Yellow earned 35%, orange 21%, pink earned 28%, and green earned 16% of the vote. Because nobody won more than 50%, the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated, and voters who picked him as their first choice have their ballots count for their second choice. This continues until a candidate receives more than half of the votes, or 50% plus one. So what are some of the benefits of ranked choice voting? Ranked choice voting provides more choices, allowing more than two candidates to compete without fear of splitting the vote among like-minded individuals. Sometimes voters feel pressured to vote for the lesser of two evils. Ranked choice voting allows people to vote for their favorite candidate, not just against the candidates they dislike. With ranked choice voting, we see more positive campaigns and less negative advertising. <laughs> candidates are encouraged to reach out to as many voters as possible, including those supporting their opponents. They can build a winning coalition with like-minded candidates to earn voters' second and third choices. It's time to fix our democracy and make our elections work better for everybody. We can do that with ranked choice voting. Visit www.fairvote.org to find out how you can get involved. Okay, thank you. Um, and you can go to the next slide. It's a sample of a ranked choice voting ballot. And league members who do voter education on ranked choice voting say that if people have the ballot, that's why if I were with you in person, we would do it 
with a ballot have you you know actually vote because it's really great to have this ballot in your hand they say if you see it visually and it's kind of intuitive you know how to rank your candidates and you don't have to rank them all you don't want to rank anybody you wouldn't want to live with so next slide um this is the real world Ranked choice voting has been adopted in over 50 cities now and in two states, in Maine and Alaska. So Maine will be using it to elect um, uh, the president uh, in their state in 24, by the way. And then it has passed in New York City, the largest city in the country. It was implemented last November. And here you see 31 women of different colors and backgrounds out of 51 members that now serve on the city council in New York City. It was uh, you already used in four presidential primaries in 2020, and it'll be used in more states, as I said, in 2024. I'm not sure what all those states are at the moment. Um, the GOP uses it in Utah for their internal elections and it's used in many small towns in Utah as well. Uh, I just want to say this really is a reform for voters. It's it's completely nonpartisan. So while most of the support comes from the blue side, there, there is a there is um, support from the GOP, especially in Utah. And um, I can also refer you to a great um, uh, webinar, not it was a Zoom meeting just like this, actually, but we had a speak, we had speakers, uh, and the topic was the um, conserv conservative view of ranked choice voting. That might be helpful um, considering where you live. And it was really good too. It's on, in fact, I think it's on our YouTube channel. So next up is a video with San Francisco. Um, uh, no, this, the next video that we're going to show is the one on uh, that what candidates say about ranked choice voting. What I like about ranked choice is that it fosters a sense of collegiality, I think, between candidates. Um, and it also allows first time candidates like myself um, to not have to encumber the expense of going through a, a primary and then potentially a runoff election. So for me, it was um, a really positive experience and I would um, encourage people to get to know more about ranked choice voting. In the city of Berkeley, our runoff elections prior to the implementation of ranked choice voting we're at a time that did not um, allow our student population to fully participate in local elections. So by implementing ranked choice voting, we're saving taxpayer dollars, we're ensuring that the voice of the voters is, is, is heard, um, and we're giving the voters more choices, and we're also empowering and enabling grassroots candidates to run for office and be elected to represent their communities. So it's essential that we expand access to ranked choice voting throughout the state of California and the country, um, that we further reform our democracy to empower the voice of people. It was fantastic. I was able to say, vote for this woman at, and me in whatever order you want. And uh, I didn't have to say bad things about my opponents. I got to say something nice about one of my opponents, and I won the election. You know, we had a large field of, of eight pretty diverse candidates running. And so, um, so I think ranked choice voting allowed um, the voters to be able to 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 choose, you know, their their you know multiple candidates and, and rank them in order. Um, and but it also was positive for the candidates as well because it it um, promoted a, a more um, cordial or collegial sort of um, atmosphere. I really, really like ranked choice voting because it took a lot of the stress out. You know, there were people who didn't realize we had ranked choice voting or didn't know about it, who felt very anxious because they said, oh no, Sonia, you and Christine are gonna split the pro-housing vote. And 
I was able to say that we wouldn't because we have right choice voting in San Francisco and most San Franciscans know how to use it. I like right choice voting because I think it encourages many more people to run. It encourages the diversity of ideas. It gives people real choice in who to vote for. I think it's been an important improvement for our community. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, the next slide is, um, is just shows you some um, longstanding editorial support for ranked choice voting and for proportional representation. And then we're gonna see a video on what San Francisco voters have to say. Um, I, I have, there's other videos like the, they did a lot of, of uh, on the street videos with New York City voters too, but um, I thought, well, these are California. It's not exactly like, uh, you know, Central California, but it, but it is California. Um, so this is some of the editorial support. And, and I just want you to know that uh, in the, Pat said in the newsletter that's coming out that you'll have lots of links that I've provided some really great uh, information about these ideas and uh, lots of resources. And the one I wanted to make note of is this New York Times piece uh, from David Brooks. And uh, he's that David Brooks from PBS who also writes for the Times. And he wrote this really nice piece about one reform to save America that's very good. So uh, next slide. Oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, is this a video now on the ranked choice voting voters? No, wait. No, the, the Minnesota one, right? This is only one minute. I threw this one um, in so you guys, yeah. Minnesota, yep. Yeah, this one's only one minute, but it's, it's a real quick review of the county. <laughs> Dang YouTube. Pick your favorite color. Yeah, I know. Sorry about that. Instead of voting for just one color, you get to rank your top three. Well, purple is the best, but if I can't have purple, I want blue. And if neither of those wins, I guess I can live with orange. Now, let's count up everybody's votes. Under ranked choice voting rules, it's not enough just to get the most votes. You need a majority more than 50% of the votes. Purple's ahead, but it has only seven votes. It needs at least 11 to win. So we eliminate the color in last place. Sorry, orange fans, we're going to your second choice. Two more for green. One for purple. But no color has 11 votes yet. Still no majority. Bye bye, bye blue. One more for purple. Four for green. And we have a winner. The Ranked Choice Voting Way. Minnesota was one of the first cities. Uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul were one of the first cities to adopt Ranked Choice Voting. And um, now it's used in more cities in, in that state. But that's with the... Uh, Minnesota Public Radio put together, which is pretty cute and holds up well. It, it really does help explain the counting easily. So um, now we're going to see the video. We're almost done. Uh, the video on what rank to, uh, what uh, San Francisco voters have to say. I like great, great choice voting because I felt it gave me the opportunity to support multiple candidates that I found promising. And I agree with her. <laughs> <laughs> I thought ranked choice voting was a very easy way of selecting the three candidates that you feel are the most uh, capable of doing the job. And I like ranked choice voting because I get to vote for who I really want to vote for without worrying about splitting the vote. I'm really excited to see ranked choice voting on the ballot this year. Uh, this is my first experience with that format of voting, and I'm excited. I think that's the way a democracy should go. 
it's a, like a real majority and it's the best way to include more than two parties. I like ranked choice voting because sometimes there's just more than one candidate who I like in a race and it's great to actually be able to vote for all of the candidates that you love. Like. I feel like it's a it's a great way to support multiple people at once just in case another person doesn't make it and you get to support the next person. I'd only really thought of the person that I first wanted, but then I liked having the opportunity to pick more than one so I don't have to come back. It allows me to pick my favorite, my second favorite, and the one that I can kind of live with um, in open politics, which is awesome. I chose someone who might have been a bit of an underdog in this race, and then I went with a classic that's very likely to win. But I like that have the ability to still have a voice and not have it thrown to another candidate that I really wouldn't have wanted. Okay, Amy, you've been great. Thank you. Um, so uh, you probably heard the candidates say that campaigns are different with a ranked choice voting, which is really great because negative campaigns don't work. You're looking for, for voters to give you, if not their fir first choice, a second or third. So you don't want to start going negative on people because it might be that voter's favorite. Uh, if you can imagine a get out the vote campaign with a canvas worker, who sees an opponent sign on a, on a yard or a bumper sticker or something, and they don't pass it by. They, they rather, um, you know, talk to that voter if they can and say, hey, um, I hope you'll consider ranking my candidate as number two or three as a backup because these candidates have similar ideas. And here's why I think you could live with my candidate, something like that. You see, uh, a lot of times candidates now, you don't see people running because, um, you know, if Pat and I, for example, had similar ideas and I found out Pat was going to be running for mayor of Modesto, I certainly wouldn't want to run because I wouldn't want to split the vote and hurt her in any way and be a spoiler. So I think with ranked choice voting, it's really great that more people could, um, that have similar ideas could could run and as those candidates said even in Oakland in, in district three council race in Oakland three women had a commercial where they said oh you know she would be good because she she's a CPA she'd be with budget issues and then another one said, she'd be good with this it was like 15 seconds real quick and they said so vote for us one, choice one two or three but be sure to vote November 3rd something like that so um, I, I um, as I mentioned at the start, whatever your issue is, this electoral reform is really necessary. And that's because the public policy that we want is made by the people who are elected. So we're only going to get there um, if we can be open to this, to changes, and electeds need to be open to it too. Uh, one of the most exciting proposals for change is the Fair Representation Act for Congress. And I would be very happy to come back or refer you to a great speaker on that subject at some point and talk about it. Uh, talk about how it would end gerrymandering and end this one party districts like the one I came from um, that leave out, you know, in that district, they left out 40% of the voters completely without representation. And that's repeated in congressional districts all over the country. No wonder people are apathetic. If you can't, you know, be represented in 30 years. So um, um, let me just say, we know these districts aren't red and blue. They're purple. They're a mix of people. So how about some questions? Thank you so much, Paula. So to start with, we've got the qu uh, first question is from Jane. Are there very many cities in Southern California who utilize ranked choice voting? No, um, not too many. Um, you are all familiar with these lawsuits that um, that started in California that forced districts to, I mean, forced uh, at-large jurisdictions to go to districts. Um, 
uh, there have been two jurisdictions, Palm Desert and, and one other one I can't think of right now that were forced to go to ranked choice voting as a remedy to their voting rights case. However, um, there's been no real, there's like Los Angeles is just huge. They have, they have it. The, the most exciting effort right now in Southern California is the um, San Diego effort. San Diego League of Women Voters is very engaged in, in an effort um, with a coalition of groups to, to uh, put ranked choice voting on the ballot. They tried it once and they lost by one vote to get the council to put it on the ballot. So San Diego is the next best um, place. Eureka just passed it in Northern California. Albany, the city of Albany in uh, near Berkeley, a very small city, they are gonna be the first uh, city to use the, propor the uh, proportional ranked choice voting method, which keeps their city at large, keeps it from being broken up into districts. They kind of got ahead of the lawsuit. Um, Mary Ann, your question didn't make it all the way into the chat. So if you'll retype it for me again, dear, that way I can ask it. Oh. And in the meantime, oh, thanks. absolutely. Allie asked, would you like to comment on AB 2808 by O'Donnell that prohibits the use of ranked choice voting? Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. I didn't know how much the word was getting out on that. Oh, it's 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 just a shocker. Absolutely. Um, at first, we thought that there must be somebody behind this because this is a Democrat. This is a person who's already announced um, that he's not running again. So why does he care? So I figured somebody must be behind this. But no, it looks like this is just something he doesn't like. And every, uh, every um, um, point that he makes in support of his bill has been, is just completely easily, easily disputed by facts and data. So for, because we're league members, I can tell you the league, um, I, I'm the, you know, this is a very small position, very few bills come up that, that, pertain to this position, but I'm like the person who would write the letter for them. But I didn't even get to write a letter opposing it because the league jumped on a coalition letter that opposes the bill. So there are, I've been watching and there are, it, it's gone to the uh, uh, um, Assembly Elections Committee and it will be heard in April. But I have been watching and there is so much opposition to it from especially uh, cities where they already use it and have used it for a long time. Interesting. All right, our next question, Paula from Colleen. Our local registrar of voters indicated that the machines, the voting machines that Stanislaus has for counting votes do not have the capacity to use ranked choice. Do you have any facts out there on the cost involved in converting? Um, I haven't heard that Heart Civic, I looked to see what you had too. Um, yeah, that is it's not a system for it. They, they say they can do it. This is what, what Heart Civic says. They say we are um, compatible. However, um, they, they, are, they haven't made a big effort like our system here is Dominion and Dominion voting uh, system is what's used in San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley, San Leandro, and now Albany. Um, and they're just set up for it. Um, uh, so uh, you're right, you're right. Your current system probably is not the best for ranked choice voting. However, I called your registrar and I haven't gotten a call back somebody was going to call me because my question was I had read that you were going to uh, or Modesto or I guess the county it would be the county was going to upgrade their system and I wondered if they upgraded to Heart Civic or it, they're going to upgrade it because what if they're going to upgrade it I know any federal there's a bill in Congress right now that any federal money that is is given to counties to upgrade their system 
it must be ranked choice voting compatible. It's in the law. So that's good. But I don't know if there's any money in the, in the works for upgrades, but that would be something to, you know, kind of uh, follow for you guys um, with your registrar to, to uh, see if any chance of, uh, of upgrading their, their system. At some point they have to. Wait, I'll, I'll tell you what, I just went on a tour with our registrar and I'll just add this. One of the things that the, the registrar did the tour herself and one of the things that she said about having Dominion equipment that was so much better than what they used to have, which was ES and S. There's only like four vendors. So we've already covered three of them. Um, and she said, Dominion has um, off the shelf hardware. So like a Canon printer or an HP laptop. And so when things need to be fixed or upgraded, it's, it's easy off the shelf stuff what they had before and what I think may be a consideration for you with, with a heart civic is, is the um, replacing parts and stuff became a real issue for our registrar. And, uh, and so they really appreciated the dominion system having the off the off the shelf hardware. Um, we have a question from Teresa who says, where can I get directions on how to run a multi-choice election for my club? Oh, oh, what would be, uh, there's software out there for that. Um, uh, is it a ranked choice voting election? Are you electing one person or more than one? Teresa, do you want to chime in and speak to it? Uh, I have a situation where we have to make some choices and we have multi-choice options and I simply want to know how you do a small scale multi-choice election. I'm confused as to how you administer it and tally the, the votes when you have more than one choice to make. Um, I was hoping to see how you do it. Is there some place I can go and just get an example oh. of how that is done? Are, is your outcome to elect one, the, the favored choice or several choices? Um, it, would, it would boil down, we'd have maybe five or six choices and we'd boil it down to one. Right. At the, at okay. the end. Okay, that makes it really easy because you're, you're, it's a ranked choice voting, um, you know, majority winner election, basically. Uh -huh. But so, sometimes, also, I, sometimes I've been in a situation like when you're electing people to a church board, for instance, mm -hmm. you've got six candidates in four slots. That is also a situation I've run into in, 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 a, in a, on a church board or a, a local committee, and that's a problem, and I don't know how to do that, and I'd like to. So I still need information, and I know you can't give it out tonight, because time is limited, but I'd really like to know where to get that information. Okay, my, my first thought, quick quick answer would be go to fairvote.org. Okay, thank you. Okay. John Scott, I saw that you had your hand raised. Do you still have a question or a comment? Take yourself off of mute, dear, and you're good to go. Thank you. I was just... I was just wondering what some of the people have already brought up, but I'll repeat it. I want to know, <clears throat> since in the last election, counting was the big bone of tension, safeguards do we have that, that all these counts are going to be legitimate? Basically the same safeguards we have now. If, if, you, if, you, if you trust your registrar and, and, and the count of county, which I hope you do. I do. I certainly do. But there are some, I'll not name them, there are some who don't think that. Well, yes, John, I can relate. That's why we just finished this tour, our league, with our registrar, because we wanted to feel that absolute confidence that we, that we know we have in her and in, in, in the whole team there. And we were, we were delighted. But of course, all the stuff they have to listen to is unbelievable. The things that people do and say to them, but they just they just keep moving forward. And, and in a ranked choice voting election, 
it's really just the same as any other election. You know, the counting goes, you know, in rounds and it's, you know, it's, it's used in so many places. In, in fact, in New York City, can you imagine a city that size? And they used open source software. We can't use open source software in, because um, otherwise that's what I would recommend for, for you guys in your county, but we can't use it in California because um, uh, our software must be uh, uh, California state certified and federally certified. And that software is only federally certified. Do we have any other questions, any other comments? I don't see anything else in the chat. So wanted to make sure we gave everyone the opportunity to ask Paula whatever was on your mind. We do have an extensive number of resources. Um, oh, Colleen's asking how does certification work? So I'm guessing she's asking and follow up to your comment about the certification of software. Oh, that is a huge process that the Secretary of State goes through. And unfortunately, Dominion is certified federally and in California. So, <laughs> so that's covered, but um, we, we are seeking open software. That would be the answer because Dominion is a for-profit company and Dominion sees the way to make money here. They can license that software. All it is, you know, the county already has all their hardware. So they wanna charge just to license the software and and then of course, you know, maybe even on an annual basis. And for, for uh, counties who have runoffs, uh, there it, it can, you know, uh, balance out the savings from the runoffs with, with the uh, purchase of that software. But ideally what everyone wants from San Francisco, they've worked on it in Los Angeles. I know they've worked on it, but it just doesn't seem to be happening fast enough because it's, it's expensive to do, I guess. And um, the California legislature hasn't put forth the money to um, create open so source software for something like this. As you can imagine, for electeds, this has changed that their political consultants are telling them, oh, we like it the way it is. We know how to run the elections now and we don't, we don't know how to run an election like that except that one of the links I gave you guys, you'll see the uh, Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center. They cater to candidates and they show candidates how to, um, how to campaign in a Ranked Choice Voting election and win. Uh, if no other questions, can I just mention that those of you who may be going to convention or may be listening um, um, delegates, uh, to the June National Convention. We are going to have the state of Maine is doing a great caucus on proportional ranked choice voting um, for municipal elections. And uh, I'm gonna be doing one with a panel on messaging for ranked choice voting, how to talk about it with voters, how to uh, talk about it with electeds and have a panel of, of, of uh, league members who have actually done it and won campaigns. And one other invitation I have for you is it, you can let Pat or Lori know, if you would like to be on, if, this, if, if the a topic of electoral reform interests you, we have a national electoral reform advocates group that we started when we, when we were working to get this uh, national position adopted. And we do quarterly electoral reform uh, Zoom meetings for just an hour like this. Uh, the next one is on ranked choice voting messaging. So if any of you are interested, just I can put you on that list. Just uh, maybe have um, Pat or Lori or somebody just send me a list of people and I'll add them, okay? Okay. Well, I just want to say uh, you are a wealth of information. Oh my gosh. I can see it is your passion and I see, see yeah. why you've been at it for 20 years. And 
look at what you know and what you've shared with us. And the league is very fortunate to have you out there, um, you know, informing people and letting us all understand more about this process. I think that you also, I really appreciated that you did um, some personalizing about Modesto and uh, inquired about us. And I do hope that you get a phone call back. <laughs> like you and I talked about the machines last night. So uh, really, really appreciate your time, Paula, and your knowledge and um, ways that we can uh, continue this uh, involvement. And I probably am going to contact you about that speaker you suggested. Uh, Fair Representation Act speaker. That sounds very interesting. Yes. So I will yes. be in touch with you. That is it. That's a wonderful us. conversation. You'll enjoy it. Okay. You will be hearing from me <laughs> for future programs. But anyway, I just want to say thank you so much. Very informative. And um, thank you for everyone who attended. Uh, look forward to our, our next one. We'll have um, another one that I will... It'll be about water. It'll be a little different um, focus, but this has been incredibly important and timely too. So thank you so much. And I hope everyone enjoyed. I hope we learned. I feel very informed. So thank you. And thank you to Miss Amy and her wonderful.